These are some of the things we think about when we're at a crossroads with our photography. For one reason or another, we might feel like our photography could be improved in some way. But taking that next step to improving our craft can seem a bit overwhelming, especially to someone who's just starting out in photography for the first time. It's what leads a lot of beginners to give up on photography or seek out what they think will be instant fixes. But all these things don't instantly fix the problem. They don't directly make you a better photographer. Training your eye to see photos is ultimately the skill we're trying to improve here. No camera, no preset, not even me is going to be able to help you improve that skill. Only you can, but I'm gonna try to help anyway. Thank you to Earth for sponsoring today's video. I don't have the time for photography. This is probably one of the biggest reasons a lot of people don't continue on with photography. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but the best way to improve a skill is through experience. So you're going to have to put time into something like photography in order to improve. So how do you find the time for photography? And the most practical way of implementing photography into your life is by implementing it into your daily routine, into the things you're already doing. The best example of this is by putting it into your daily commute. Maybe you usually take the bus or train to work. Consider getting off the train a stop or two earlier and walking the rest of the distance to your job. You can take out your camera for that walk and it's an easy way to get some photos into your day. Just make sure you, you know, give yourself some extra time. Um, I don't want to be responsible for anyone being late to work. But if it is in the morning, you're going to be photographing the city in that nice morning light and you're going to get a lot of busy foot traffic on the streets. It's one of the best times of day to do street photography in my opinion. On your way back home might be the more job secure option, but if you do, you're also going to be getting that afternoon light, which is arguably just as good or maybe even better. I personally know a ton of photographers who do this. They get off work and they shoot around the streets for a bit before they head back home. It gets to the point where it's really just become a, another part of their day and they're taking photos literally every single day of the week, which goes such a long way in improving your skills. And you know, get off work, take some photos with your camera, such a great way to de-stress. Um, so there's that too. For someone like me who works from home though, I don't have it so simple. I need to find that extra motivation, that inspiration to get out there myself to take photos. Now I understand everyone is different when it comes to finding inspiration, but for me personally, I always get inspired from books rather than, you know, photos that I see on social media. They could even be from the same photographer, but if I'm looking at their photo in physical form, in the form of a book specifically, I just get way much more inspired from that than I do when I stumble across an image I see on Instagram. There's just way fewer distractions. I'm not bombarded with the rest of the noise that is social media. There aren't these numbers constantly screaming at me, comments, notifications, and messages. When you look at a book, it's just you and the image. You have all the time in the world to focus in on it. And so I personally get so much more out of looking at photography this way. And naturally, I end up feeling way more inspired. And that gets me wanting to go out there and making some work of my own. Photo books can get a bit pricey, so I'll share a few inexpensive options of my favorite photographers in the description. You can also visit your local bookstore or library and see what photographers they have there. Either way, when you go through the books, see how the different styles vary across artists and how their own individual styles carry over between each photograph. And maybe there's one artist's work you really like and you can start to visualize photography the way they do. When you look at an artist's full body of work in a book, you might notice that they have a preferred style. And that style is oftentimes determined by the focal length that they're using on their camera. To keep it simple, a lot of street photographers either like to shoot with a wide angle lens or some like to shoot with a telephoto lens. 
The focal length that you use has a huge impact on the style of a photo, which segues me into my other practical tip for those trying to improve their photography. Before we continue, I want to take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor, Earth. When you're just starting out photography, it's incredibly easy to get caught up in the idea that you need a certain camera or a certain lens to get you taking better photos. When in reality, that's just not true. Cameras, cameras are tools. They are necessary for what we do. These tools won't create the work themselves. All that creativity comes from here. But there are times where we do need a specific tool to help create the look that we have in our mind. So whether that be an ND filter to better control the light, or using a lens adapter to use vintage lenses on our camera to provide a bit more character to the image quality. These are the kind of photography tools Earth has to offer that can really help photographers. If you're like me and you're invested in some lenses for a particular camera body, but you can't use those lenses on your other cameras, a lens adapter like this lets me take these Leica M mount lenses and attach them to my Fujifilm. For less than a fraction of a cost of one lens, I gain three more. And this is a great way for anyone who's wanting to try out other focal lengths you might already have that focal length for a different camera, but don't want to go out and, you know, spend full lens money to use that lens on their camera. This is a great alternative to that to see how you like that focal length. So if you're interested in checking out Earth and all the other gear they have to offer, you can use the code FISAL at checkout and that will get you 10% off your purchase. Big thanks to Earth for sponsoring this video. I don't know what to photograph. To this, I say, focus less on what to photograph. Focus more on how you want to photograph. At the end of the day, photography is about photographing things that are interesting to you. So it doesn't matter what you're photographing. Right now, especially when you're just starting out, it's important to explore your interests, to photograph everything and anything. Through experience, you'll figure out what clicks, what, what things make you go, it's actually pretty good. Then look for those consistencies in your work. Find themes of what you like to photograph. And maybe from there, you'll find yourself on a more clearer path. But that process takes a lot of time and our interests naturally change over time. So it's not so practical of a tip for me to just tell you, yeah, you know, just keep going. You'll get there. So rather than contemplating about what to photograph, think more about how you're going to photograph. How are you going to compose that frame? Are you going to get close to the subject or are you going to photograph it and frame it from a distance? Are you going to include parts of your environment in your image or are you going to single out a subject? However you approach it, it's going to ultimately be decided by the focal length you're using, which is why I said earlier, a lot of photographers who shoot with a certain focal length tend to have a consistent style and approach to their work. Are you using a wide lens? That's gonna capture a whole lot of the environment around you. Are you using a telephoto lens? That's just going to capture a slice of what you're seeing. And you can be a bit more selective. Depending on the focal length you use, you're going to approach photography completely different. So if you find yourself constantly jumping between, you know, a 24 millimeter lens to a 50 millimeter to a 85 to a zoom, it's not only going to be difficult to figure out what you want to shoot, but how you want to shoot. So my most practical tip is to just choose one focal length and shoot with that focal length for some time. You don't have to make this grand decision to just shoot with that for the rest of your life. No, that's not what I'm saying. But shoot with one focal length for a day. And maybe that turns into two days, and that two days turns into a week, and maybe that week turns into a month. Before you know it, you're visualizing scenes all around you with that focal length in mind, and your work is naturally going to end up having this consistency to it. If you look at someone like Alex Webb, he uses a 35mm focal length most of the time, which is pretty wide. So it's great for his environmental photography. He can capture multiple people in a single frame, and that completely suits his photographic storytelling. And then when you look at someone like Saul Leiter, who shot mostly with a 50 millimeter lens or higher, you can see there's a much more condensed perspective of the street. It's usually one or two subjects in a photo, and they're framed within the environment. It also leads him to a much more abstract approach, 
and that's all complemented by the longer focal lengths he chose to use. So pick a focal length and shoot with it for a day or two, or maybe longer. Play around with the limitations of it and see where it takes your work. Now my final tip for beginners looking for practical advice can easily be misinterpreted as uh, the wrong way. It's about reframing some of your goals. I am all about dreaming big and having aspirations to have you know, your own photo book. Maybe it's to have your own solo exhibition or to sell a print. And those are all really great goals to have as a photographer. But when you're just starting out, don't put that pressure on yourself. I see a lot of photographers quit photography because Sadly, for a lot of them, it's because they aren't getting enough likes on Instagram or they're not building a following online or they just don't feel like they're getting enough great photos to build something out like a book. You should not be putting that kind of pressure on yourself and having that lead to you quitting photography because you're not seeing those results you want. And that's just on a bigger scale. On a much smaller scale, you shouldn't put so much pressure on yourself on the day you go out shooting. Odds are you aren't going to get that gallery-worthy photo when you go out to shoot, let alone a photograph you're even going to be half happy about. But that's part of the process. You can't look at those days as lost days because they aren't. Those days add up. They add up to experience, and that experience is what's going to ultimately lead you to being a better observer. And in my opinion, when you're a better observer, you're a better photographer. So with that said, I hope those of you who made it to the end of this video at least found something useful out of it. If you happen to have your own practical tips for beginner photographers, please share them in the comments. You never know who's reading them and you could really help out someone else who's starting out. I appreciate you all for tuning in today. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.